This happened a few years back. It was a warm summer night, stars twinkling overhead, and I decided to squeeze in a little nighttime jog. I thought, why not? The streets were quiet, and the cool breeze was perfect for a run. But boy was I in for one of the most terrifying nights of my life. I laced up my sneakers, popped in my earbuds, and hit the pavement. The rhythmic thud of my footsteps and the beat of my favorite playlist are the only sounds in the serene night. The streetlights cast long shadows, and the moon's glow adds an eerie touch to the empty sidewalks. I'm cruising along, feeling the burn in my legs when I notice a guy up ahead. Now I've seen my fair share of late-night joggers, but something about this guy sets off alarm bells. He's hanging around a dimly lit alley, and as I get closer, I see him eyeing me with this intense, almost predatory stare. I tell myself not to be paranoid. Maybe he's just catching his breath or taking a quick break. But as I jog past him, I can feel his gaze lingering. I could feel his eyes on me. The hairs on the back of my neck stand up, and I pick up my pace hoping to shake off the uneasy feeling. I turn a corner thinking I've left Mr. Creepy behind, but as I glance back, there he is, keeping a steady distance. Now, I'm not one to jump to conclusions, but I can't shake the feeling that something's off. I decided to cut my jog short and head back home. As I approach my building, I realize I'm not alone. Mr. Creepy is still there, lingering in the shadows. My heart starts pounding and I tell myself to stay calm. Maybe he's just going the same way, right? But when I make a sudden turn trying to throw him off, he follows suit like a shadow refusing to let go. At this point, I'm on high alert. I decide to take a detour through a more crowded area, hoping the presence of other people will discourage him. I pick up my pace, weaving through the streets, and as I turn into a well-lit plaza, I breathe a sigh of relief. There's a group of people hanging out, chatting and enjoying the night. I blend into the crowd, trying to act nonchalant and glance over my shoulder. There he is, lurking in the distance, eyes fixated on me. Man, this makes me feel so uncomfortable, so I decide it's time to ditch the jogging routine and try to head home again. I make a beeline for my building, constantly checking over my shoulder, heart racing like a jackrabbit. I fumble for my keys, my hands shaking, and as I glance back one last time, I realize Mr. Creepy is closing in, determination etched on his face. I sprint for the entrance, adrenaline pumping and slam the door shut behind me. Safe, right? Wrong. As I catch my breath in the lobby, I see him outside, glaring through the glass like a predator denied its prey. I dash for the elevator, praying it arrives in the nick of time. The doors open just as I reach them, and I squeeze inside, frantically pressing the button for my floor. I glance back through the closing doors, and there he is, pounding on the glass like a wild animal. The elevator ascends, my heart still racing, and I can't shake the feeling that I've narrowly escaped something truly frightening. I reach my floor, exit the elevator, and as I make my way to my apartment, I can't shake the image of those predatory eyes haunting me like a nightmare. I lock the door behind me, peek through the blinds, and there he is again, staring up at my window from the street below. Panic turns to terror, and I grab my phone, dialing 911 as I watch him pace back and forth like a caged beast. The operator assures me they're sending someone over, and I huddle in the corner, eyes glued to the window. Minutes feel like hours, and just when I think I can't take it anymore, I hear the distant wail of sirens. The police arrive, and as they approach him, he puts up a struggle, shouting something about how he just wanted to talk. They apprehend him, and relief washes over me like a tidal wave. Turns out, the guy was wanted in connection to multiple attempted kidnappings in the area and I had just narrowly escaped becoming his next victim. As the police lead him away, he shoots up a menacing glare towards my window, promising me with his eyes that this isn't over. I shudder, realizing how close I came to a nightmare scenario, 
and I can't help but wonder how many others may have fallen victim to his disturbing intentions. So there is one thing I know for sure. If something feels off, it probably is. Always remember to keep an eye out for those lingering in the shadows, and never underestimate the power of a gut feeling. I've got a bone-chilling story that happened to me not too long ago, so I'm trucking down a dark, desolate highway in the middle of nowhere, on my way to Tennessee for my drop-off. It's around 2 a.m., and I'm in the middle of a long haul, my eyes getting heavy. I figure a cup of joe is in order, so I pull into this rundown gas station with flickering neon lights that barely cut through the darkness. As I am pulling my rig out of the parking lot, I spot this guy. He is standing at the edge of the road with his thumb in the air looking to catch a ride. Now being the good Samaritan that I am, I figure why not. He looked harmless enough, just a regular guy. He had on a brown worn out leather jacket and looked to be maybe in his 30s. I pull over, roll down the window, and ask him where he's headed. He tells me he's just trying to get to the next town over and with a nod, he hops in. We exchange some small talk, nothing out of the ordinary. He introduces himself as Jack and I give him the rundown of the road, you know, just shooting the breeze to stay awake. But here's where things take a turn and get downright creepy. As we're chatting, a news report comes on the radio about a suspected serial killer on the loose. They're saying the guy's been hitchhiking, preying on truckers and travelers. I glance over at Jack from the corner of my eye, and my gut tightens into a knot. I mean, it can't be, right? Just a coincidence. But then they describe the suspect, a male in an old brown jacket, in his early to mid-thirties. That's when I realized I might have just picked up a suspected killer wanted in multiple states. My palms start sweating on the steering wheel, and I try to play it cool, keeping my eyes on the road. I decided to test the waters, ask him about the news report, acting like I was skeptical about the news. Hey, have you heard about this serial killer on the loose? Pretty freaky stuff, huh? He just chuckles this eerie, bone-chilling laugh that creeps me out to no end. Yeah, real freaky, he says, eyes locked on me like he's sizing me up. Things got real uncomfortable fast. Now, I'm no hero, and I sure as heck ain't looking for trouble, but I've got a duty to keep myself and other truckers safe on the road. So I subtly hit the brakes, making it look like I'm slowing down for a curve. I tell Jack that I need to take a leak, and that I won't be long. I pull over the rig a few feet beyond the curve and get out. After I walk into the nearby woods, I reach for my phone and I dial 911. As I'm talking to the operator, giving them the lowdown on the situation, I look back and see that Jack's getting antsy. He starts fidgeting, glancing around like he's trying to figure out an escape plan. My heart's pounding in my ears as I keep one eye on this mysterious hitchhiker and another on the road hoping that a squad car pulls up soon. I walk back to the truck and climb back in. I try to keep things cool with Jack and make small talk again as I drive about half a mile up the road. I pull off the highway into a quiet rest area, all while keeping up the facade that everything's normal. As I come to a stop, Jack starts getting jittery and asks why we are stopped. I tell him that I just needed to take a quick break since it's a long way before we get to the next stop. He's eyeing the door, looking for a way out. I can feel the tension in the air as I wait for the police to arrive. The operator reassured me that they were on their way before I hung up with her a little while ago, but every second feels like an eternity. Suddenly Jack makes a move. He reaches into his right jacket pocket and pulls out a gun and points it in my direction. He's furious, cursing and pounding on the windows, and then demands that I unlock the door before he puts some lead in me. I unlock the doors, keeping my eyes on him, and that's when I see the headlights of the police car approaching. Relief washes over me as they pull in, guns drawn. Jack tries to run into the woods, but they apprehend him, and he is now yelling about how he didn't do anything. Turns out the guy was indeed the suspected serial killer wanted in multiple states for some gruesome crimes. The police thank me for the heads up, and I can't help but feel a mix of fear and relief. Fear that I narrowly avoided becoming a victim, and relief that I made the right call. As they cuff Jack and read him his rights, I sit in the truck, watching the whole scene unfold. 
The highway, once quiet and deserted, is now alive with flashing police lights and the distant wailing of sirens. The police thank me again, pat me on the back, and assure me that I did the right thing. They tell me to take it easy, finish my coffee, and get back on the road once they clear things up. As they drive away with Jack in custody, I sit there for a moment, letting the adrenaline subside. The night is still, the air heavy with the weight of what just happened. I realize that sometimes, the darkness on the road isn't just the absence of light. It's the shadows that lurk within it, waiting for an unsuspecting traveler. So, my fellow truckers and night wanderers, keep your eyes peeled, trust your instincts, and remember that sometimes the scariest things on the road aren't just in the tales we tell, but in the unexpected hitchhikers who may be hiding more than you could ever imagine. I've got a bone-chilling tale from my bartending days that'll make your hair stand on end. So, I snagged this gig as a bartender at a place that came alive when the sun went down. The regulars were the usual mix, some rowdy, others looking for a quiet corner to nurse their drinks. But then, he walked in. This guy, tall and lanky, with a dark aura that really creeped me out. He always sat in the same spot, this dimly lit corner where the shadows seemed to gather like old friends. I'd catch his eyes in the mirror behind the bar, piercing and intense. The first night, I thought he was just another customer, but something about him set off alarm bells in my head. As the nights went on, he became a regular regular, showing up like clockwork. Same spot, same intense gaze, ordering the same drink, a whiskey on the rocks. I tried to shake off the eerie feeling, blaming it on my overactive imagination. But then, things took a turn for the downright creepy. One night, as I was wiping down the bar, I felt a cold breath on the back of my neck. I spun around expecting to see a customer looking for another round. But there was no one there, just an icy breeze that sent a chill through the air. I shrugged it off, thinking that it was the old building's faulty AC. As the nights went by, the weird occurrences escalated. Glasses would shatter for no reason, and I'd hear hushed whispers when the bar was empty. I started to feel like I was being watched, a pair of unseen eyes following my every move. Another evening, as I was closing up, I saw him again, whiskey in hand, staring at me with those penetrating eyes. I decided to confront him, thinking maybe he was just playing some twisted game. I walked over, trying to keep it casual, and asked if everything was okay. He didn't respond, just stared through me like I was a ghost. This really creeped me out, and I took a step back, feeling the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I asked if he needed another drink, but he just kept staring, his eyes devoid of any emotion. I started hearing his name whispered in the dark corners of the bar. Samuel. The shadows seemed to dance to an unseen rhythm, and the air was thick with an unspoken presence. It was like the bar had a life of its own, and Samuel was its ghostly puppeteer. Curiosity got the better of me. I decided to dig into the history of the bar, thinking maybe there was some dark secret hidden in its past. As it turns out, Samuel wasn't just a regular, he was a regular from years gone by. I found an old newspaper article from the 1960s that sent shivers down my spine. Samuel Turner, a regular at the very same bar, had met a tragic end. The article described a mysterious death, whispers of foul play, and a ghost that supposedly haunted the place ever since. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I was serving a ghost. Samuel had lingered in the shadows for decades, unable to move on. The cold breath, the shattered glasses, the intense gaze, it all made sense. I was sharing my nights with a spirit from the past. I started asking around, talking to the older regulars who'd been coming to the bar for ages. Turns out they'd heard the stories too. Whispers of a ghostly figure, a presence that made the air turn cold. Some claimed to have seen Samuel in the same dimly lit corner, sipping on his eternal whiskey. As the nights went on, my interactions with Samuel became more surreal. I'd pour him a drink, knowing he'd never take a sip. He'd still sit there, 
staring into nothingness. I felt a mix of pity and fear for this trapped soul, reliving his last moments over and over again. The other regulars started sensing his presence too. Glasses would tremble on their own, and the whispers in the shadows grew louder. It was like the bar had become a portal between the past and the present, and Samuel was the reluctant gatekeeper. One night, as I was closing up, I felt a hand on my shoulder. I turned around, expecting to see one of the living regulars, but there was no one there. The air felt charged with an otherworldly energy, and I knew Samuel was trying to communicate. The whispers turned into hushed words, like the wind carrying a long-forgotten secret. Help me, he seemed to say, his voice echoing through the empty bar. I couldn't ignore the plea in his words, the sadness that lingered in the air. I decided to reach out to a paranormal investigator, someone who I thought could help Samuel find peace. The investigator confirmed the presence of a spirit in the bar and suggested a ritual to guide Samuel to the afterlife. As the ritual unfolded, the bar seemed to come alive with energy. The lights flickered, and a cold breeze swept through the room. I could feel Samuel's presence, a mixture of gratitude and sorrow. The investigator spoke words that transcended the boundaries of the living and the dead, guiding Samuel toward the light. And then, it happened. The shadows seemed to recede, and Samuel's ghostly figure slowly faded away. I stood there watching as the bar returned to its ordinary state, the neon lights buzzing overhead. From that night on, things changed. The air felt lighter, and the whispers in the shadows grew quieter. The regulars returned to their usual banter, and the dimly lit corner where Samuel once sat was now just an empty space. I continued bartending, but the memory of Samuel lingered. The regulars would sometimes mention him in passing, a nod to the ghost who'd been a silent part of their nights for so long. Next time you find yourself in a dimly lit bar, keep an eye on the shadows. You might just be sharing your space with a ghost from the past, a lost soul seeking solace in the neon lights. And who knows, maybe you'll become part of a tale that spans the realms of the living and the dead. Thanks for watching. Don't miss out on more spine chilling tales. Subscribe now for weekly scares. Hit that red button and join our journey into the unknown.